It didn't take too long. Hey, everybody! Spiral Ice just crashed. <laughs> Welcome back. Split screen is pretty amazing. I can't even be mad. All right, we'll, we'll uncrash it. Dive into the depths of Java. Yeah, yeah. Let's start and stop. It's okay. Nothing wrong with that. I black screen several times. <laughs> My, my wife and I have issues playing games together because I sprint forward like a freaking crazy man. Um, and about back to uh, Rambo's point. Um, mostly just get along yeah, with people that like stuff, you know. We, we as men usually form relationships based on tasks at hand and commenting on them and, and seeing how we react to them. Um, you know, we're meant to work. We use our hands. It's, it feels good to use our hands. So it's a... You know, it makes sense. People like stuff, and you like stuff, you get along with them. Now, <clears throat> when they ask you personal questions, you have no idea how to respond. Um, that's when you, it, it's good to kind of look into your own worldview. And if you have questions that you can't really answer, um, they're, they're good to reflect on. Um, a statistic that was brought to my attention was the, the average person, at least in America, spends only nine and a half minutes a day thinking. Now, that is doing a disservice to yourself. I have nearly 50 plus text files just for memory-based things to remember. That's okay. I, I was uh, I was set to memorize a couple verses for this uh, coming retreat. I didn't. That's that's one of the things about living the the life that I live is I, I have to sacrifice a couple things and um, putting myself into that whole memorization paradigm. It's it was it's, it's tough. People would ask me what favorite thing is. I have no idea. Then I start to make a list for the next two hours. That's okay. You can type, but I need you to jump in. Holy hell. Dude, C.S. Lewis has the best definition of what hell is. Now, we're just going to get all sorts of away from the history, historical challenge of, of, of uh, philosophy, if that's okay. We kind of touched on them a little bit. Um, but just, just to get, throw out some names there for philosophy, if you ever want to show it, or if you ever want to dive into this part of it, we have Santiana. I just wrote a couple of these things down, because I also have memorization issues. We have Santiano, who says that history is all the divine will of God. We have Kant, uh, Kant saying that uh, history is, is basically the uh, like social values coming together. I forget what Hegel says. <laughs> Engels is like the it's about the classes involving themselves. And, like Marx and Engels were huge when it came to the communistic development. <laughs> I forget what Spengler said, probably, but uh, but every one of those has like a justifiable reason, viable reason, trying to form a pattern. Because when it comes to the nihilistic philosophy of history. Well, like it's it's pretty much stop, all stop. Like there is no point. The end. I mean, and there you go. How did I ever get on nervous room? I don't know. I can't type either, my friend. It's okay. I prefer the talking point here. Are you gonna? Where, where'd you go? Well, we want to help you through spiral night's progression. I never took a single typing class. I type. I type like. So I don't have my, my hands at the right keys because I used to play this game called Major Mud, which was a picture spiral nights lockdown, but you have to type everything you do. So when someone attacks you, you got to type fast and you got to move and you got to put input commands and things like a round of combat will go off every four to six seconds, something like that. It's okay. I get distracted, distracted by conversation to the end. One of the reasons I played this game is because I can talk and do it at the same time. I'm really gonna put a you know a little bit of my brain into it. So I've been playing it for so long, but like my left hand covers like if you look at the keyboard, like the N G T number five, like up at that angle. My right hand covers everything over to the right. <laughs> well, besides the mouse, you know. So I don't really type, you know, as you know tradition, and and then that actually docks me points when it comes to like a typing class because I don't do it correctly. But I think that's okay, right? I mean, if there was ever a life and death situation where a keyboard is slanted and they said, we need the fastest typer to type out a book report, boom, I'm your guy. <sighs> I had a friend who was like that rampant. He said, uh, I remember when I still went to school, people would see my fingers and, and, and think, I understand what you're saying. Holy F, how is he doing that? I had a guy who could type as fast as I could talk right now. And it was just majestic. It looks like his, his hands were just, like, rolling on the keyboard. 
And like that's a great skill set. I could not do that. It gives you a sense of superiority when it came to like interaction with technology though. It's, it's really neat. No, I've seen people that do that. And it's just like, and then things appear on the screen without, or at least with very little error. And you're like, what for living hell? All right, we're doing 9.3, right? What's the next one? You did 9.2. What was, let's find terminal meltdown. Where is this one? Okay, 9.2. Alone in the dark. Let's freaking do it. <clears throat> I like, I enjoy feeling superior to people. I just don't like to tell people. Well, that's uh, that's the pride of life, my friend. It's 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 good to feel that sense of accomplishment. Um, so here's your here's the bounce back from scripture, right? I know, I know, I know, Jeff. It's all right. If you have Amazon armor, you'll be fine. But the um, the the bounce back, the pushback that uh, that Christ said on this stuff was that um. So here, here's what he did when it, when it came to, like, superiority. He sent them out two by two and said, go banish demons and heal people. And they said, okay. And he said, uh, and they did, and they did. And he was like, holy crap, the demons all came out of these people when we, it was amazing. And he's like, don't feel happy about that, but feel happy that, you know, you're promised for eternity. What he was saying is, don't take the pride of life. Don't take your accomplishments and make them define you. You're defined by something outside of this life. And if anytime you attach yourself to anything physical, anything ability oriented and make that you, it's destined to grow. It's destined to, you have to find, you basically spiral into infinity, um, trying to justify your existence based on ability. Because eventually we all know that ability corrodes, that our mortality will kick in. It's just how things are. Else for loadout, right? There we go. And it's very subtle. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't know. You serious? I don't have a regular switch shoot loadout. What is going on here? All right. Well, pardon me. Did that jump down there? It was crazy. All right. Does that change my costume? No, no, no. Beautiful. You used to have to swap back and forth. But you have to be. It, I'm not saying it's it's not good to invest yourself in a you know STEM skill set to become good at that. You just got to make sure that the reason is beyond just being good at it in itself. Because once you start making it self-referencing, one of the only point of self reference that that has the only point that can self-reference itself and still give itself value, well, that's the definition of God. We all get our value from something else. Even if you say you're good at spiral knights, well, based on what? Based on what other people think. Based on what other people have done. You make it based on a person. Based on a person is always based on opinion. It's always subjective. It doesn't go to the absolute sense or to a singularity. God is the only point that's self-referencing. So if you try to build anything of yourself outside of a God paradigm, um, you're setting yourself up for, you know, failure. But, so how did, I'm very confused. So here we go. Battle Sprite. So what are my ASIs? I have medium, high, close enough, what should I give you? Um, maybe... There we go. We'll be speedy. Uh, I need to save this loadout. Switch. Nintendo Switch. And we might actually use this for lockdown if I ever get in there, but probably not. Save. Oh, yeah? You're not letting your ability to switch shoot define you. <laughs> Thank you, Zeddy. <laughs> Sorry, when I was doing that, I had to look off the, the chat for a minute. All right, so hold on. One thing at a time. Excuse me. Yeah, my ability to switch shoot. Holy crap, dude. I'm so bad. Okay, I'm saying I'm okay at it. I even had a macro set up to do it because Risk of Rain 2 came to the Switch last week. That's awesome. Dude, I finally got a charger again for my Wii U. I'm happy. My, my two-year-old kept putting it into her mouth and it just didn't work out. New quote. <laughs> I just like to look cool, not for the sake of others, though. But then again, so I'm bringing it back in chat, actually. I don't think that's relevant. I lost my train of thought. No, you're, you're right. You want to look cool. But then again, looking cool is based on human opinion. And then human opinion is relative. You have to go to an absolute. Absolutes help you live outside of life. Hello, Mecca. 
I might get it. I have a long plane trip coming up. Dude, I love Risk of Rain 2 so much. I don't know why it's less popular. Well, I, I do know why, because I have kind of a history of this game. There are no absolutes, though. That's great. Uh, unfortunately, because the the statement itself is self-destructive, there are no absolutes. That's an absolute statement. So when it comes to metaphysics and philosophy, you can't really go by that, because you're just accepting the abstract. You know, putting that into reality, well, we can say there's no such thing as pain, but we know what pain is. We can say there's no absolutes, but there is gravity. Gravity is still a thing. Even if gravity does waver here and there, it still does exist. There's rotation of the planets. I have an obsession with armor that was worn long ago. That was during another time. But yeah, I understand. I can understand uh, you know, being into stuff. Metal does look cool. Switching faster than Java can realize. There we go. I like to think that, uh, you know, because after playing this game for several years, my abilities have transcended beyond Java to look. And we're speaking of, we're talking about absolutes. Jeez, slow down, fingers. Java cannot keep up with your ASI stuff. Java is not an absolute. Thank goodness. Let's grab this quick. Ah, you beat me to it. <clears throat> Fast boys, I've seen them in lockdown. Oh my goodness. Help. Help. At least we're not in chaos. <gasps> oh, come on. Well, this might hurt. Watcha. Time out for Alone in the Dark. This used to be one of my favorite levels. Because I used to be into that whole, uh. Oh no! Hey, that whole, uh. <laughs> cat dodging and stuff. Or, sorry, cat farming. I did it for a whole, like, two hours once. And I'm just like, you know, I got really lucky my first time, then I sold my hat, and, you know, I get, this is what I get for, for throwing a temper tantrum. To touch base on what I said before, was talking about before, about how we're all children. There are, what did you say before, Mug? There's no such thing as adults. You know, I was acting like a, a grown child when it came to... I got, I got absolutely destroyed one day. It was like, we're, we're all, we all make horrible decisions when we're in the worst our worst frames of mind, right? They have the HALT acronym. Whenever you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or stressed out, so HALTs, you should never make a decision because you make the worst decisions in your life when you're high on emotion. And so I had a couple of games against EZO, and his AT was just absolutely destroying it, and he was making it a point just to attack me and nobody else, and so, you know, that's it. And I took it personally, obviously, because when we're all tiny little children who don't know how to deal with life, that's what we do, we take it personally. When I should just take it for what it is. Okay, well, I guess we're going to hide in the light for a minute. When I take it for what it is, um, I should have just, like, uh, been okay. I can, I can, I can take this. I got it. But I didn't have that mentality, and I went to the depths of despair. And I also wasn't very informed of my worldview at the time. I like you're religious, you're a Christian, whatever, but it's not suffocating. Most Christians I've come into contact with where they're so religious, it is suffocating. Yeah, the, um, so that's when it comes to the the whole i'm actually getting this a lot with people in their like early to mid 20s where they say you know i was brought up a christian what happened to graphics you turn that circle into a square you're redefining definitions i i go the the, the uh philosophy but the, the philosophy sense so when when we, again we you look at the historical part of this right now this is why i like c.s lewis so much is um you, a lot of Christians go with the assumption that the Bible is true. Not everybody thinks this way. And you have to... Oh, no! What have you done? I mean, what have I done? I'm helping. Sorry, I thought you were frozen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jeff. Don't, don't, don't throw money at me and kill me. It's very pleasing. Like, some people, let's do this, or you'll eat poop and die. You do this. Yeah. You get the, the sense of judgment. Um, but the thing is, you have to have judgment filtered with love intact. The, uh, it, it doesn't say, judge not, lest ye be judged. It does say that, but that's taking uh, any scripture verse should not be read by itself. You need a context in order to get a, a better meaning out of it. Oh no. Okay, well, we're still alive. Maybe not for, for long, please. Okay, actually, the whole message behind that is to tell you how to judge. It says, if you have a uh, plank in your eye, don't judge your neighbor just because they have a speck. First, remove the plank. 
you know, first make sure you're okay because you your 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 vision is blocked way more so with your own plank than it is by their spec even though their spec might look like a plank to them our own sin is by far stronger to us than it is to other people please just jump on the we're not just, we'll let the cats be that's okay thank you mecca so I go with a, a sense that not everybody assumes the Bible is true. I go with the sense that, uh, like C.S. Lewis did, that um, you know, there's we all can go. You can go, and I might do it one day. Um, buy the book of uh, Mere Christianity. C.S. Lewis did it for me. You go from a sense of oddness, rationalizing your way, to a sense of, you know, we need a savior, and that's the, the again the, uh, the the biggest thing about Christianity. One of the reasons why I feel it's true. It's because it you can't ration your way into heaven. Um, if you guys ever listen to Tool, um, when he talks, he's singing the song Wings of Marie, singing it about his mom, who's a devout Christian. He left his family, from what I understand, Mary left his family because of the oppressiveness that his father had, and we're like a Southern Baptist type of deal, where it's going by what you said, Rambo, like, you know, you better do this, or else you're just going to burn in hell. The whole turn and burn paradigm, that, and there was a time for that. And that was a mostly during a time when everybody was an alcoholic and drinking bad alcohol, and that's where the uh, the whole um, excuse me Guinness beer came from because they started making alcohol that was filtered properly, so people wouldn't die when they go blind when they drink it. Where's I going with that? That's what happens when you have like six trains of thoughts going at the same time. Um, let's go back to the sense of oddness, and uh, but a lot of people don't don't believe that scripture is true. But you can get to the starting point of oddness to the point of like. Oh, yeah, I know I was talking about the, the difference of Christianity. Is uh, You can't earn your way to heaven. And when Maynard was talking about, he wrote a song called 10,000 Wings, or Wings for Marie. He's talking about his mom. And he says in there, like, and the song is beautiful. Like, I, I tear up often when I listen to it because it puts a beautiful swing on it. Now, it's not Christian by any means, but when he's talking about my, his mom, he says, uh, you are the only one who can hold your head up high, shake your fist at the gates. He's talking about, like, when his mom gets to heaven saying, I have come home now. Fetch me the Spirit, the Son, and the Father. Tell them their pillar of faith has ascended. It's time now, my time now. Give me my, give me my wings. Like, he's, he's like, You're, my mom was the only one who could ever say that I deserve my wings because she was that amazing. Now, that's a non-Christian, at least a very skeptical Christian, I mean, if you look at his life, saying that, I don't know what's in here, so I'm just going to go all neutral. Saying that, uh, you know, look, this this lady's life was worth mentioning, was wor had a great purpose and was worth living, and she saved me. I thought it was charging. My mistake. Probably should have switched shot here as well. But it's uh, and, but that's that's actually what you should be known as as a Christian, not your judgment, but by your love. So the um, the whole thing where, um, you know, why do Christians hate homosexuals and but they also hate racists? Uh, one is a that I'm not getting into that right now. But the the whole thing, regardless, church is acceptance of sinners. We all make mistakes, and we all and sin is a assu assuming purpose. You know, we we go away from the purpose of life. There is a purpose here and there. Um, but we look for grand purpose, and we look for individual purpose. Um, and sin assumes the. The thing about, like, if you get rid of sin, you, you block out any possibility of overcoming things. Um, you say, I am just a product of time plus matter plus chance. I am just my DNA. Well, then, it's not your fault you're an alcoholic. It's their fault for not knowing you're an alcoholic. And that's when the victim turns into the, you know, the, the appropriator of the crime instead of the actual person who did it. It's saying, I can't be held accountable for anything. That's just my DNA. I can't overcome this. There is no sin. There's just DNA. Then, and then you can get rid of the the uh, concept of good and evil. Because there is no good, there is no evil. We are DNA, we just dance to his music. Let's go, Rambo, come on. The thought lingers in my mind that maybe everything in the Bible is true, and I'm sitting here freaking out because I want to just chill, and sloth is a sin. And I'm like, mm, kill me, please. <laughs> I try to think about religion because it causes instability. It does. No, it doesn't. Religion in itself has, has produced so many cults and when it define when religion itself starts with man instead of start to look at outside of yourself it, it's like starting the climb to heaven from the bottom as opposed to looking at the top of the mountain and seeing the path on how to get up oh believe me dude you you mean like a mental instability when studying all this philosophy stuff i feel like someone takes a shotgun to my thought process i have to like 
seriously take a minute to calm myself down because then somebody asked me like a basic question like how are you and i just want to blow up at them for like not blow up right but like go at them for like 20 minutes in a rational sense why you shouldn't ask that question and they're just like whoa dude i'm just just greeting you just saying hi so I, I gotta i gotta calm down my brain just goes into overload especially because i do this before work every day roughly but it's important to get a worldview established this well, again i wish i i never went to school before I was 30, because I got a, by the time I hit 30, I finally had a, a good sense of what I wanted to do with myself. I, you, I mean, you're, you're, I think 26 or 27 is when your, um, your brain hits its peak with, like, other, other people, I, I, I can account for the same way. You get this kind of king mentality of your whole, and you have a choice not to, also. Like, if I was given the chance to become a dog or a robot, I, I would in a heartbeat just pl like play video games until the planet exploded or just do dog stuff. Yeah, but that's that's a thing though, isn't it? Dogs don't question their purpose. Humans have conferences like what does it mean to be human? But dogs don't have questions like, hey, let's get there, get together and talk about dogginess, guys. We can do this. You know what? I'm glad that Mecca put away his uh, pulsar because I brought this baby. Huda. I was about to have a nitro and a nitro combo. You don't want to question your purpose? Well, that's, um, I'm not going to say it's laziness, but then you go to the Aristotelian philosophy of uh, what man's purpose is, and if anything, what defines man above others is the ability to reason. You should take that and work it out. <clears throat> what does this butt smell like? That's, <laughs> that's the life of a dog. So animals themselves... They uh, they do pander to the uh, the unconditional love lifestyle. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Come on in. They can do the unconditional love thing. Love, by definition, is conditional. You say yes to one thing, you're saying no to everything else, and you can actually track this through uh, the whole marriage paradigm. It's always confusing to me why homosexuals, the homosexual, the gay community, wishes to have forced, um, you know, marriages. Like you have to marry us regardless of your religious view. Why would you want to, like, subject yourself to that, man? Like, it makes no... Oh, pardon me. It's bomb time. Why would you want to uh, be become part of that party? It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. The the ramifications that are involved in, the confusion that it has to, toward our, you know, political and apolitical laws. Traditionally, it's supposed to be a promise between you, the other person, and God. It's a three-way promise, and it's saying that because you have God in the mix, who is a singularity and self-referencing, your word is, prom is a promise to him who does not change. We ponder the important stuff. <laughs> I wish I could just be a dog, then I could not worry about poop and just bite my tail for the rest of eternity. We are not made like that, though, my friend. Unfortunately, we are creatures of reason. That's what we do. <laughs> Don't make fun of my worldviews, Eddie. Oh my goodness, it is not sad to be alive. Well, you know what? So there's uh, there's one of the motivational thinkings, right? This is where you get to um, the name it and claim it. Uh, uh, jo uh, Jeff Olstein. I forget what his first name is. I don't know why. I have one of his books I want to read. Because um, he is, he's basically naming and claiming, saying the gospel, the prosperity gospel, right? That if God loves you, he will bless you financially. Well, therefore, I guess he loves America and no other country. I mean, that's a, he also, there's no cross in the book. It's a, it's, he is more of a, Joe Olstein, that's it. He's more of a motivational speaker than he is anything else. Because he doesn't, he can say he's Christian, but he, it, it doesn't, it doesn't rhyme like Christianity. It, um, he tells you how to lead a mentally successful life. But um, one of the things that uh, that he does, and it, it, it does touch on this in scriptures, the power, power of words and the power and the responsibility we have even to ourselves. Love your neighbor as yourself. The assumption is you are loved by God and you should be respectful of yourself in the body that you have in you and use it to it. And then you get the parable of the talents where, um, you know, God gives you each one an ability <clears throat> and we are we have a responsibility to use that ability to to you know, it's potential. Now, it might take a minute to find that. It might take years to find that. The guy who started KFC took him 60-some years to pop, pop out that recipe and to start his chain. Um, but it's, it's... 
you know, our responsibility to, to think in terms of, you know, how we should use the gifts we are given. I don't mean that's, we are creatures of reason, we are meant to reason. Um, this is very apparent in a lot of our lives. Now when we, the unfortunate part is, when we look at the, the allegory of the Garden of Eden, <clears throat> we wish to, uh, we wish to play God. That, whoa, I'm glad I didn't get cursed. Thank you, shield. I don't I wonder if it would be neat if the, the shield itself actually uh, absorbs some of the chance, the, can you just not, not be there anymore? Absorbs some of the chance of, uh, having a status effect. I don't think it, it's quite that complicated, though. I also like the fact that you can, um, you can, uh, you can put the undead to sleep. <laughs> just think that's kind of funny. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, have you met my little robot friend? He, he wishes to combat you. And this is what happens when I play a game and I don't have notes in front of me. I just went on a freaking rabbit trail of thought. But anyway. Oh, I know what I was going on. The Joel Olstein philosophy. Where, um, and it, it is actually true when you go down this rabbit hole thinking. The only one... You go get him, robot. You freaking go get him. The only one that is telling you that it is sad to be alive is you. Now, when you look at the... You can you can see absolute beauty. There is a I just watched um, a show called One Strange Rock again. I know I repeat myself sometimes, but you know there's only so much that goes on in my life because I've so many facets here and only so many interesting things per day. But the uh, he talks about he talks about the uh, the perspective that astronauts have, and then that you get this like this way different perspective. When you see the world from the outside, looking down and how small it is, and how vast the emptiness and darkness is outside, I mean, it's 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 a it's a neat lesson when it comes to truth itself. How narrow and how small truth is when it comes to the origin of life and everything that was involved with it, and how much vast the darkness is, and how relativity and how opinion can lead anywhere. And you can see this when it comes to humanism the, in the philosophical. Uh, thought lines. You have angles, you have cons, you have a, you know, where the purpose of humanity, Sam Harris recently probably made the best um, effort from a humanistic perspective, but he, again, points to a self-referencing human part of it, where he just says human flourishing should be the number one thing that we are concerned about, and then, but, but why? I mean, you, you can, uh, my positive outlook on life is odd, I know, isn't that weird? But the, uh, Sometimes my outlook gets stagnated by uh, by thought, the thought itself. Don't run into it. The only person that's telling you that life is sad is you. You get to, that's the thing, you get to choose. Ugh. And the garden, okay, the allegorical garden of Eden statement. That's what I was going at. See, so yeah, I joined the intellectual stream. I do try to keep things, I like deep thinking, man. You need to think about stuff that's important. The point, oh my goodness, the point about, uh, whoop. the point about thinking these things through so that when you have a traumatic thing that does affect you, that is on par with reality, that you are able to deal with it. Responsibilities are boring and lame? Oh, not really. I don't think so. But I, again, the, the, the one thing we have choice over, I do, you know, struggles over oatmeal are pretty real. Um, uh, what's his name? I'm thinking of the older comedian used to be a cocaine addict. I know that's probably describing 90% of them. <clears throat> Dennis Leary, that's it. He said he described immortality as uh, waking up, eating oat bran, going to the bathroom for three and a half hours, eating another bowl of oat bran, going to the bathroom for three and a half more hours. He just read the Bible on the toilet, and boom, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, uh, you're, de you're bound for heaven. I do deep thinking, but I'm too logical, so it gets depressing. Yes, I, I can actually agree with that, Mr. Kenshi. Keshi, I'm sorry. Um, if you go from a point of pure rationalization with nothing underpinning, you're basically trying to think about a reason for life in the vastness of space. Um, but on par with the light of truth, which, and, and you can get this from a lot of things, from like the... I, I got time for one more. I got like 20, 30 minutes. Rambo, let's keep going. We're doing great. Let's do another one. But like 20, 30 minute, <laughs> I don't know the half of it. Yeah, I know, I know. When you are the lead founder of Amazon, how much, how many uh, forms of oatmeal can, can you really like afford to, to have there? How are we looking on our radio? Well, like it'd be neat if we can, 
like ideally get that 64 number will be great well anyway when you get to the point of pure rationalism if you want a great coherent thought process of rationalizing your way from a point of just human thinking evolution everything's just made by humans i mean nietzsche is obviously your go-to but he spent the last 13 years of his life insane so i don't know how far you want to go with that Imagine a human not wanting to be human. Now, original speaking rationalization, the only reason I even want to be as a dog is because I have a human brain. So that's neat. Yes, um, that also... Uh, how does it say it in scripture? Like, Should the uh, clay say to the potter, why'd you make myself this like this? Um, if you start questioning your existence, you're, in a, in a sense, playing God. Um, if you start playing... This is, this is why... Uh, I know suicide's a different topic, so we won't dive into it too much, but like... Uh, choosing to end your life or choosing to alter your life choosing to say that sex is itself is malleable like i'm going to tell you i'm a nine foot chinese woman because i think i am and then i want you to pretend this also to say you can take that absolute definition even though we know our science defines things otherwise you know and ending life itself i mean why why would we why do we have this judeo-christian value that life itself is precious and we should do something over should do something else I mean, we, we are put in this body for a time and a place. Why are we born? I always thought I should have been born earlier in time because I'm, you know, way into martial arts and feudal Japan would have been great for me. But we are in a time and a place such as this and we have to make the most of this time. Excuse me. Click on the chat. Thank you too much. All right, what are we doing? What's next, Rambo? I mean, we're becoming small millionaires here. Had a dream I was a cat in my, friend ha in my friend's house. Having paws was weird, but it's probably the most fun I've ever had. And I, and I was asleep. Well, if you embody the vision of the pure essence of sleep, I guess that's cool. I know uh, members of my my fa family on my wife's side, so I guess not directly. They do, uh, they're into the whole spiritual side of things. And the, the upcoming generation is actually not buying into the whole uh, enlightenment rationalization where there is no spiritual life. And you know, mathematically, we can prove there are 11 dimensions. You know, Doctor Who type deal. The gauntlet! Oh my goodness! Coming in. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can definitely uh, get depressed if you, you start thinking rationally. Um, but if, if you think of singularity and purpose, uh, you, you can get yourself out of that. Okay. We are doing the gauntlet. I think it starts out... I mean, we gotta do the whole neutral thing, right? Arcade, voltage. I've had many dreams where I was either an animal, a human, animal hybrid, like a werewolf of sorts, and the two dreams I was a werewolf was probably the most fun I've had in my entire life. Well, I was having a discussion about see, the worship leader's husband. About, we were talking about the astrological signs and stuff like that. And the, the, so, when it comes to pairing yourself, I mean, the, the human consciousness defines reality. It, it really does. And dreams are pretty awesome. Um, no, I'll stay asleep, man. I wouldn't have you here. Dreams are awesome. And they can tell you a lot. The thing is, um, and it, the one thing that scripture does, uh, warn you against is, uh, placing all of your value there. Because when it comes, even when the, first off, the spirit world is stronger than you, stronger than your flesh, which you usually, a lot of people put a lot of tie and faith into. So you got to be careful when it comes to that aspect. Um, they're also outside of time. We are in four dimensions. That's not very many when it comes to 11, if you want to have the mathematical part of it is absolute. And when it comes to dreams, well, mathematics makes no sense in dreams. No one can read, no one can do addition, no one can do subtraction. So that kind of stuff goes out the window. So our logical power, all our muscular power, our spiritual beings, we're, we're very much in, in infant side. Infant side, that's, a, that's the worst word I could have possibly used there. But we are we are an infancy. How's that? Because we don't know how to deal with this stuff. And, and um, I guess I could do something like this. Beautiful. Maybe I should have chosen a different sword. I, I guess you can join Brother Blue. Where are you at? Where are you at? Invite. There we go. Can never have enough help. This man's got an arcana. Stand back. One, two, three, four, five. Ha, cha, cha. Dude, I haven't done the gauntlet in so long. I also got to keep an eye on my times. I'm coming, buddy. Medic. 
I sent blue an or I sent the other blue an invite. I am not blue. I haven't had that title in like four or five years, and I still am like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> People honor me by calling me by my my former title. That's that's the way I look at it anyway. Excuse me. Do you even know America? Your charge might be better than mine, but does your charge have an eagle? But anyway, that's the uh, the whole Potter saying to the clay. Sorry, clay saying to the the uh, craftsman. You know, why'd you make me this way? Well, he did. One of the uh, the biggest. If you read the Book of Job, one of uh, Job's biggest things was was not, you know, trying to ooh, trying to get a huge answer. Or rather, rather was trying to get sorry. It was uh, his his biggest thing was was desiring an audience with God because he wanted to find out the answer for his plight. He didn't argue that plights don't exist. His argument was not against suffering itself. It was uh, you know just wanting a reason for this because if you if you understand you know there the purpose behind things or that there is purpose behind things you you understand there is reason for a lot of things that might go on in our life it's just finding out what that reason is and god's answer to him was where, where were you when i created the foundation of the world you know how, what kind of perspective do you add and when i was talking about management earlier i brought this up you know suffering yeah sleep sleep is nice um i have a i'm i'm at the opposite end of that spectrum though um I have a problem sleeping. I woke up at 12.45 last night. I forgot to see the one. I thought it was 2.45 and I'd overslept. So I went down, made coffee, put my con like, put my eye drops in. It helps me wake up, five my eyes clear. And, my, and I, I started, I'm like, my wife's still up. I'm like, honey, you still up? She's watching TV. I'm like, you need to go to bed. She's like, I'm sorry, after this show? You know, we, we listen to each other. She tells me I need to take a nap. I listen to her. I tell her it's time to go to bed. She's an night owl. I'm a morning person. Um, so she'll listen to me and I, I kept I went back up to like start getting ready for the day and I'm like holy crap I have two more hours of sleep I need to have my sleeping my my circadian rhythm it's still there but just like my sense of smell somehow it's just lost to me like I gotta I don't, I don't know what's with that like I, I can wake up and be like oh okay and only throughout the day when my my uh, my resilience will be in question. That's that's when I kind of realize that you know I probably, probably should take a nap, and I do take naps. I like to write down my dreams in detail because I look at them and recall the fun I have while I sleep. Not in the detail, just the best of my abilities. Uh, it, it's a it's a little different for for myself. I write down dreams because they have huge meaning. I can I still have dreams I had like seven or eight years ago. I'm not oh what on earth I just ran right into that one, but they they can apply to my life right now. And uh, maybe I'll just go over one of those someday. But dreams are huge. Um, they You get dreams in, in different types of worlds. And, and when you look at dream interpretation, it's neat seeing the, first off, the similarities between like the Muslim and the Christian interpretation of dreams. That's actually a skillful art. And it's amazing how true those things are. Like, if you, if you have, I know one off the top of my head because I read into it and it made a lot of sense, is if, if you have a, a dream of yourself like defeating people in physical combat um that means you have an argue you have arguments that are pretty sound that you whatever your view is in the subject in your life that's going on <laughs> that uh you're uh that you're pretty you're pretty solid in what you got and you know studying apologetics and truth and all that and it, like it just made a lot of sense i'm like oh, okay so i can have these dreams because i'm a martial artist no i, I just I, I decided a twofold combat worldview one in truth and one in apologetics or oh, sorry one in martial arts it's just, they synergize amazingly maybe that'll be a whole talk in itself really surprised it didn't hit you it's okay i accept it i accept it and i'll rectify it yeah but uh, I, i'm in the opinion that dreams have meaning so if you're being called to i know that spirit animals are a thing um, I also know that the spirit world really doesn't work very well unless you buy into it. I, I sort of do, but at the same time, I take the uh, the Apostle Paul's view on it where you shouldn't... It's it's there, and when you need to, you should combat it. You should deal with it, but don't seek it out because that stuff is stronger than you, and it will pull you in. So, you know, just be careful with that kind of thing. 
Oh, rain of fire. And then we have the the literal gauntlet right after this, right? So I think that that'll be it after we do these last two. I gotta I'll be getting ready for work, so. Anyway. So when they what I would like about the uh, the author of this book that went into the historical challenges, he he points out the difference between events and history as a whole. Like there's the the fire in Rome, and then there is the history of Rome. You take there's individual events. Is this is this a recon zone? Let's just do freaking traditional and blow your face out of the water right now. You know, there's events, but events aren't history, and history are not specific events, like the the, in, um, the invention of the plane, right? And to quote myself, first thing I did was run upstairs, out the front door, jump onto the roof, and howl. I don't know how to interpret that part of the dream, because <laughs> I just looked on my own. It's, this is something I don't, I'm not, you know, it's not my calling to run into dreams or the stars. Just not something I'm, I'm into. Jumping up objects and buildings. I don't know what kind of meaning you'd take from all that. I don't know. Maybe you just need to be free. Maybe you are locked into something. Maybe you need to travel. And this is just me speculating. I know you can go into a... When you start... The man's got, the man's got a blade. When you start diving into meaning and stuff like that. And you know, like, dream, there are legit dream interpretations. Just like the astrological... And they kind of go on part of the astrological sign. So I'd recommend looking into someone who's more versed in that than myself, obviously. If that's the way you want to go with it. In your face. I can flinch you forever. Meanwhile, back in Spiral Land. Probably don't need these. One, two, three. Yeah, man, maybe you need to lead a more physical life. If the, um, Do something. By the way, if you're not doing something in your youth, which uh, uses your abilities, I would strongly suggest it. Why do I have the sword first? That is just so wrong. I'm messing up my own mind. Thank goodness I dropped that bomb there. Coming. Coming. Parkour. Coming. We have this, uh, we just started this new class in our dojo called Little Ninjas. It is exactly what you think it is. Trying to atta attract kids to karate these days, it is pretty fun. So let's, uh, let's, let's dive into you for a little bit, right, Rambo? We have the, the... You want to be lazy, you want to sit around, but then you're given these dreams, which say you, you or basically you being like active, like crazy. Maybe you're, uh, maybe you're trying to be given a message that you should, you should, uh, go away from this. You should go away from this, uh, the lazy mentality and, and make the most of your skill set. And, uh, cause sometimes passion exceeds ability to the, to the nth degree. Hello. For example... In martial arts, we break boards. We break bricks. I broke six bricks on fire. I think I have a video on my channel still, like, way back. So I match my instructors, and that's what I hope to do. I think if I do any more, I might break my arm. But at the same time, the... Like, and I saw a talk on, on why martial arts is bad spiritually. Because I, I have to look at this stuff. I, I'd be... It'd be... I'd be doing myself a disservice if I called myself a follower of Christ and didn't examine at least... You know, a little bit. Why? Why did you open that, Rambo? Come on now. Hello, with the bullshit. It's good to see it. I'm gonna go grab this loot, and that's okay. These guys will be forever locked in. They're they're little. There's no bathroom in there. It's gonna get stinky. But anyway, <clears throat> the, um, this room is more soundproof than the others. It's okay. It's okay. They'll live a good life until they starve to death. I mean, or until their fellow gremlins come and knock another hole in the floor. I know I get a lot of, uh, Australian, European viewers, if at all. I mean, who else is awake at, like, 4 a.m. besides myself? I wake up at, wake up at 2, because, uh, that's like the crickets are barely functional. They're like, Crick. you can hear this little tiny cricket snores in between everything.
Oh, I do want to watch some of your EDF there, Zeddy. I think I will, like, tomorrow. Or well, tonight. I have to... My, since my white hard drive went bad, I re... Uh, like, for, for the C.S. Lewis thing, I have to type out, like, my conversion story, while I, how I got to Christianity. Um, I also have to type out the text from my world, how I grew up in society. Yeah, like, when was the last time... Think about this. When was the last time you actually wrote out your life story? There's a lot that goes on in the individual life, regardless of the age. Ask your parents if you're not sure. You can ask them, where, like, how you got to where you are. They'll give you a lot to fill in the gaps. But I had to type all that stuff up, and then my computer, my uh, wife's computer, kind of bit the dust. And you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to put this here. Save as. Arcade. Kaboom. Beautiful. Because uh, the other way was just messing me up. I should. should we, do we need the sleep bomb? Probably not. Got highlights up for it. They're pretty good in my opinion. Oh yeah, the uh, the EDF stuff. Yes, I, I do want to watch it at some point. I just don't know when. I'm trying to stay in education for as long as possible so I don't have to get a job. Well, I don't know about that. You have to have it be some sort of STEM stuff eventually. I'm gonna mute myself by the way so you don't hear me. The uh, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> You have to get yourself into a STEM field at some point. Otherwise, it's like thinking all day and never doing anything. Like You need to take whatever kind of skill set you're going for and apply it to life. You get more meaning out of this. Ask a, it's just in us to help out or to educate the next generation. Any kind of skill set is always one generation away from just being obsolete or just not existing at all. Thinking all day and never doing anything. <laughs> Computer science, okay. Well, I mean... That well, then you're you're literally if you at least if you take that for your course or whatever you take it for, it's still going to be, you'll be in education and computer science itself because programming languages freaking change all the time. You have to be able to adapt to that kind of stuff. So you got to be you will be in education. It's just the nature of the beast, regardless of where you go or regardless of where you go. So I can understand being in education all the time. Can you put slimes to sleep? Yes, yes, you can. Excuse me. Mr. Wintergrave. You can put them to sleep and then they, then they get you. Please. No, me too. Can they be on fire and asleep? This is my save zone. Thank you. <laughs> we did it. They can be on fire and asleep, but they do heal, so I guess it's... You know, kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> Sleepy safe zone. This is like the, uh, the candlelight. Automate your entire existence with computers. Yeah, uh, Ben Shapiro actually had. A, I think he had a philosophy where if you uh, if you look where we're going, we could possibly get to a point where everybody works from home. Uh, but you'll still need somebody to automate the robots that uh, you know harvest our crops, and at least to maintenance them. So there will always be, you know, some kind of skill set out there that involves using your hands. But when it comes to programming languages, you have to you have to always be in a form of education if you want to stay up with that kind of that kind of that kind of stuff. That's just it's just how it is. Um, they always find a better way to do it. Like when you when you can advocate, when you can create your own language, and you can find out better and better ways of communicating, then uh, I mean you have to be able to learn uh, learning languages constantly. Uh, I've developed language now, unfortunately. For our sakes, Java has been basically thrown by the wayside. Uh, Flash also is going out. I don't know if you guys saw that update that uh, um, Chrome will no longer be supporting Flash uh, like December 2020. What Was it the fire bomb? The Bible talks a lot about fire swords. Swords are cool. Fire sword is cool. That's pretty effing radical. Yeah, maybe. It's uh, Fire swords, specifically, there's... One, and I think it's more allegorical, where it's talking about accessing the tree of life and when we were kicked out of the garden. I think that's, uh, you know, the, the possibility of immortality is gone from us in this earthly life, which I think is necessary. And my voice is freaking going, dude. I can feel it. Flash got supported years ago. It might have, but um, I know it still works in Chrome. Because um, I use it for making my thumbnails, the pix Pixlr. 
website. I can just upload them and literally edit them on the web. It's pretty nice. Cutting things is fun. I um, I have one sword that was given to me for getting my black belt. It was like an honorary thing. That's the only edged weapon I have. In Okinawa, <clears throat> they, um, they had their weapons taken away from them several times. So, um, like, the, the weapons we have in our martial arts is, uh, we have the Sai, we have the bow, we have Budo sticks, we have the Jo, which is, like, a half a bow. I'd never subject another human to pain for the sake of fun, but I like web I like weapons, I like to get dead things. Well, yeah. Uh, the, anyway, the, the Okinawan philosophy is that, uh, the, re the reason I like the Sai so much, like, the weapons are meant to maim not to kill they're not meant to sever limbs they're meant to though like one of the the basic strikes for a sai and you'll never see this watching freaking ninja turtles is that the uh you want to hit the the, the top of their skull like that's that's your basic strike you hit their skull plate and that's like the hardest part on your body we we as, as men specifically have this giant jutting forehead <laughs> that we that protects us ouch uh, well, we might be taking some damage here for a minute. But at least... Can we put the undead to sleep? I yes, we can. Okay, good. It's just the, uh, the robots we can. And Java is now being destroyed. I need you to rush me, or... or yeah, that's fine, too. Just wanted to give a little pause, see if that treasure came at me. But the whole point of the Okinawan weapons is, is just to main... Or, or to, sorry, debilitate, like the, like, like the, the asp, well, this is gonna be, maybe, maybe a little painful. The asp is a, a weapon that the police officers have. It's meant to hit legs. The same concept in the Okinawa weaponry for the Sai. I practice the Sai daily, it's my favorite thing. I'm gonna probably come out with like a video special on it, maybe just for the dojo, I'm not sure. How to fight with the Sai. I literally have a Sai sitting, I'm almost dead. Sitting on the, uh, oh, number seven. On the back of my bedroom door. If someone, um, yeah, no thank you, little buddy. If someone breaks into my house, I'm grabbing that sucker and heading down. Or if I hear any noises, I, I literally can grab it right off the, the back of the door. You know. You don't often see size being used. They're very, uh, very finicky weapon. They, they require a good bit of, like, forearm strength. Like, a lot. Good bit, and a lot. I just, I just threw myself right into that guy. All right, buddy. Oh my goodness, bless my soul. Help. We did it. We just hide in here. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Dude, that guy was asleep, alert, shocked. He was just having all sorts of issues. You knew that guy, Mad Jack, Jack Churchill. I, I honestly don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. I do. Uh, use claymore during war with guns yeah okay i get it I, I do remember hearing something about that yes there were also like during the time when gunpowder was still was was starting to be used as a weapon um still samurais going around cutting people up because you no know, it, it took a little bit to reload so during the reload time you know wackity whack 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 and i saw that movie the last samurai it's a good example until they brought out the minigun mm. Do you have to show me, my friend? Were you just, were you just looking at my beauty? Let's confirm. Good trade. Oh. <laughs> what? Am I supposed to take this? I don't know what I'm going to use it for. I think I have. Do I still have that celestial cattail? I forget. I do. What am I going to do with this thing? Well, that's the thing, Divulge. I don't have one. I have a... I, I have a black cat hood. Gorgeous. E-O-U-S. Jabba, where's your spell check? Don't you dare give me one of these. 
<laughs> you gotta be kidding me, dude. Now I gotta put that on there. It's like a combo. Sometimes want to just things look neat without digging into deeper meaning for why. And luckily my brain is so minuscule the only time I think about it is why is when people ask. Don't, dude, okay, so when it comes to philosophy, there's a, uh, the, the, how I got my worldview required a massive amount of reading and thinking. I don't hold other people to my standard. Don't feel like you're, you, you might not be meant for that purpose. The, the best analogy I still have is uh, the concept of like heart surgeons. I am not made to do any form of surgery. It's just not me. I'm not meant to get out of here. I'm not meant to uh, jump into the whole uh, cutting people up paradigm. I know doctors who actually are intimidated by me because of the things that like the way I can just rattle off stuff. Now, I they're I am intimidated by them because of their skill set. Like holy crap, you got to be so smart and so we are in trouble here by the way. I got to be so smart and uh you know, study a whole lot and like freaking doctors, dude. They make so much more money than me. And to hear them say that that kind of stuff is just it's just really interesting. But they're that's that's more of a purpose-driven thing. I uh I'm not going to say I get you know, faint when I see blood. Obviously, in the martial arts field, you have to have some kind of a stomach for it. Um, I've seen people get hit. I've seen bloody noises, noses. I've seen faces caved in. But when it comes to cutting people open, I can only subject myself to that, like, for so long. And they, like, do it all the time. We're still on fire. Help. Mike, help out. Good job. More fire. So philosophy itself and diving that deep into meaning... Um, it's not for everybody. I would suggest strongly in studying what you know to be true just to make sure it is. Establish a worldview as you get older. And it takes a long, it might take a lifetime. Establish that kind of stuff. It's worth it. Um, that way, the, and the more you get there, the more, you, the further you go into understanding what you know is true or by, you know, getting rid of the things that are not true in your life, um, the more confident and more life you will have as a person. I get asked, so the common question, common things like, um, why are you so happy all the time? And because at work, I'm like, my wife calls me a robot of positivity, not in work, but just in general. And, um, and they, they, they use cliche things for me because I never, like, nothing ever gets me down. Adapt and overcome. We got this. We can do it. Doesn't matter. You know? And I, and they ask me, like, why are you, like, the, even the way I, I try to, I try to, okay? I'm not perfect in any means. I'm not trying to advocate this. How do I, like, why do you, the way, uh, people enjoy talking. Let's throw some more fire in there. Hey, we did it. Only two dead bodies on the ground. Why do you, uh, you're just easier to talk to. And, I, and my immediate response to this is, you know, why do you, uh, like when I ask other people these questions, they, they look at me like I'm an idiot. And I'm like, well, whenever I see you, I see the image of God on you. God put his image on you and you are worthy of respect. We got some radiance, bar. And if you are worthy of respect, then it is, I mean, by definition, my duty to respect you. I got some radiance. I saw one in there. Dude, thank you. Thank you. Uh, luckily, I'm so shallow and pathetic when they do ask me. The only answer I can give them is, it looks neat. That's okay. At least you, you we can identify things in patterns. At least you're using your mind. I really just like blood and cults. Well, my own blood and those nosebleeds and stuff are fine. I know. that, But that's, it's, we are all called for different things. Computer science is not my thing. I actually was in the networking field for a good two years of my life. It turns out that's not for me. I need to use my hands more. I need to be with people more and interacting with them more. It's just me. It's not everybody. I was never really phased by death. Yeah, but um, death it's so de that's an interesting kind of topic. Death itself, it's if if it's distant from you, it, it's not nearly. It, when you start questioning this stuff, usually it's when a traumatic event happens. It's right at your doorstep. Like a, someone who's really in, involved with you in your life, you know, or you come upon a tragic thing with yourself and you try to look into purpose for yourself. You know, it's it's de death in mass 
it's a difference, right? So we can talk about the six million people that died in the Holocaust, and then when I start referencing to the six-year-old that got shot in the face in York, not even like, I don't know, five miles from me, um, that my heart goes out more to the individual because we know what's involved in individual life. Six million, well, that's just a number. The lower you go, the more meaningful it is. It's kind of interesting when you think about it. I'm not a Christian. I don't feel like I actually know much about Christianity. Dude, I can give the whole testament about... So let's talk about like just the name Christian. Christian is highly political. I like to use... Because there's so many variations of Christianity that go on the verge of not directly into cultism that saying that you're a follower of Christ is much more accurate. Anyway, so maybe for your sake, Keshi, I'll, I'll dive into the, what, I, I'd rather, I, I like a, throwing myself into more of a comparison. Let's, let's go through that. So, okay. I'll finish the stream with this. I gotta go make my daughter's lunch, get dressed, all that good stuff. Zeddy says, Dad of my friend used to say, one death is a tragedy, a million is a strategy. You are not wrong, my friend. It's a, when we start throwing, like, when, we, when our mind can't wrap itself, be, like, around those numbers. Kaboom. I am a gorgeous individual. What goes with this? Wait, wait, wait. Beautiful. <laughs> no, 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 no. There we go. That's better. Sweating because I desensitized myself to death just because I felt like it. Whoops. And that is actually an outworking of our culture, right? How many games do you know that people play that are popular which involve killing in mass to the point of desensitizing it? Our mortality is constantly ignored. We put on innocent forms of disfigurement all the time. I mean, do you use deodorant? Do you wear good clothes? I mean, when you think about it, we, we mask death. And when we think when we start talking about tragedies and death and loss and how horrible they are, what do they, what do, they do to death? They don't do anything to death. If anything, just bring it closer to you. We all know we are destined to die. That's just the nature of mortality. It, it'd be very ignorant to ignore that. Accessorize. Had to. Now I'm beautiful. I'm a beautiful snowflake. Do me a favor and throw on your shadow sun armor. All right, buddy. I'm beautiful. I don't feel bad when people die. I feel like because like what's crying gonna do make them come back just be happy as they were and move on or don't do whatever yes i can understand that um but we are not just head that's not the that's not the trade option you genius there we go you almost look like the old blue frosty god <laughs> oh, forgot about that except for the face thing all right i'll pop it on there dude it is freaking Christmas. Thank you. I will wear it with pride. I don't know if I'll ever be able to heat it. But, okay, we're not just head. When you start devaluing emotion, devaluing the natural human response to stuff, <laughs> you can only see one of my eyes. When you start devaluing the uh, the human response to things, um, you, you you have no choice but to ra you, like give a monetary uh, moral value to people, and that's when you start getting to a you know survival of the fittest, survival of the superior race, because you have you have no empathy for another's pain. Um, you have to recognize sorrow. Sorrow is part of life. At the flip side of things, which we discussed about earlier, the if you were just all emotion, well then you make the worst decisions in your life without thinking rationally beyond a point when you are in the depths of emotion. So you gotta be careful with that too. We are a mixture of the two. And we are given common sense to determine what is when you use one and when you use another. I'm just a freaking gorgeous individual. 
but dude, you're just you're pretty. What can I say? Rambo fails to be a human part two. Come on, dude. Don't doubt. I've had years to the, ever since I, I popped 30 and then uh, three things happened to me at the same time. One, I got my, I got a job promotion, a pretty big one. Two, I bought a house. Three, my wife was pregnant. And so I was like, I should probably look into maybe going to church and stuff like that. Um, but this kind of stuff, I, 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 I didn't come up with a lot of this on my own. The question, so when I have, when I look at open forums, when you look at the common questions against Christianity, against worldviews, absolutes in general, there are no new questions. They're the same ones that have been going on since the Platonian, Aristotelian times with absolutes versus relativity. Now the flavor of that might change. And when we talk about history, Rex, that's what I was trying to go into. History rhymes. It doesn't repeat because generations are not the same. DNA does not repeat itself. It's too many characteristics. Too many social values. There's too many variables to have the same exact thing happen again. But history sure does rhyme. Hello, cat. Welcome back. It's like your fourth time on my lap. Yeah. And every person starts out from a unknowing point to the point where they could just... You can look for this stuff. And if you see somebody, like just like a doctor, if, I'm, if I have a broken leg, I'm going to seek someone who knows how to treat this because I sure, certainly don't. What is this? He's just pouring stuff on me. Any life tips for a hopeless 17-year-old? If you are suffering... This is where I want to, like, you know, literally take you under my arm and, you know, work out with you a couple times because some, something about just physical exercise helps you out. First off, exercise is great. Actually, don't be as far away from anywhere near that Rambo. <laughs> now get out of here. A hopeless 17-year-old? Um, I can say don't give up hope. But that would be kind of silly, right? Do what I say. Stick stick out with life. Sometimes it takes a long, it takes a, a a couple years to understand what your purpose is, and it's it's two things, right? So when I started praying and when I started, uh, you know, let's see first off, drum roll, stun low. Start, start, just till till you drop. No, no, no. Um, don't get like just keep keep living life. Um, be care. You want to measure your desires with tact. Don't the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The three things that will pull you away from purpose. Um, one of the things that's been proven scientifically, statistically, is that something that gets you out of depression, that gives you more hope, is literally helping other people. So the point of the church that was said in, um, crap, you know, for being a Christian, my scriptural knowledge on point is just not probably where it should be, but the, we, we are to take care as a church, church means the called out ones, it's not a building location, we just happen to put them in buildings, um, is that, that we take care of the orphans and the widows, we help out those that need help, helping out other people, I went on the Bethesda mission trip, uh, a couple times when uh, it's called the mobile missions when we seek out people that um, are they don't seek shelters during the coldest time in January for whatever reasons because shelters have rules you can't have drugs you can't have uh... you know you can't have drugs you, you can only stay for so long but for whatever reason these people don't seek out the shelters and so what they do is they they're out in tents and we go out and we give them blankets and we say you know in the name of, in the name of christ we give this to you we want to help you out helping others out gives you such a feeling of purpose and it's it's contagious because then when they feel that and they get that and they sit there and they contemplate the generosity of people oftentimes they do the same thing even if it's in like a poverty stricken atmosphere you give them candles to warm their tent they will share that candle it's pretty cool others expectation of me is much higher than my expectation of myself well that goes on to parenting um if i held everybody to my standard i would, I would be on a pedestal shouting at a wall because no one's as good as me no i'm just i'm not that I, I changed my view i used to be so good at whatever skill i would put my hand to I would look down on others saying, why can't you just grasp the basic fundamentals of doing the right thing? I don't understand why you can't look into absolutes. And, but when you're trying to win a person over to your worldview, arguing and 
um, measuring by pride or anything in his flesh. It doesn't do anything to, for anybody. Both parties lose. I used to be very good at um, yelling at people. My first job management job, it was actually a sense of pride to belittle people in front of others and we would brag about it. I was turning into a bad person. I didn't like it. So when someone steps on my toes at a work, like at a meeting, I can put you in your place and mother F you out the building. I didn't like that kind of person. I was bringing that home to my wife. You can't separate the two. Your character will emerge one way or another. You can't be one person here and another person there. That's called hypocrisy. You must, <clears throat> for your own sanity, try to be the same person everywhere. And it takes quite a few years to, to even put that into practice. I have social anxiety and really can't speak much. I'm always very understanding when it came to talking to people. I'm good at understanding other people rationally but not emotionally. So how do we touch each other emotionally? How do we, we, well, first off, you can start with the basis. We know that emotion does exist. People feel pain, happiness, pleasure, elation, passivity. There's a whole bunch of uh, things that we can apply to a specific kind of mood. And there's a lot of moods. You know, let's go hang out with Nick. Nick will give us some strength. And as a, from a male perspective, you know, we, we are more head than heart. Females are more heart than head. When God created us, he said, man and woman, he created them. Woman and man and man and woman, he created them. When he talked about humankind, he's talking about both. It is, it is the logic of the strong dominate the weak that actually put males as a higher position than females. They're supposed to be literally, the, they're the physically weaker of the sex, so that we, we, they were made out of our ribs, so that we're supposed to put our arms around them and help them. We are not just a male society. We're not just a female society. Understanding people emotionally, so that comes with direct relation. Um, hanging out with people, even if they're your close friends, even if you only have one, or your family. Hello, Snowrunt and Ham Monster. <laughs> I had an awkward period between age 3 and 30. Hey, I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> Alright, well, I gotta get going. I gotta do a whole bunch of stuff in like 8 minutes now, so um, I will probably be on tomorrow. Depends how much typing I get done. Because uh, I'm trying to, you know, advance the stuff over the next couple of days. So I get one thing a day coming out for YouTube and whatnot. So, um, dude, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is the first lively discussion I've had for a while. So good to see you, Rambo. Once again, thanks for watching. Anything new in SK? They got the vault. If you, if you see my YouTube icon, I kind of altered that a little bit to fit, you know, the whole background I like using. But. <laughs> Our speaky board, you good. Once again, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, click the like button, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. If you're on YouTube, follow me on Twitch. I try to do it daily, but it doesn't always happen consistently between the hours of like, um, like 3 30, 4 30 a.m. Um, anyway, I'm still at that awkward period between 4 and 400. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.